Okay, so you are welcome to the Hero Tech. This is where we learn from zero to hero. It doesn't matter the amount of knowledge you do not have. And as much as you are ready, you'll be able to learn together. And so just a quick one. We are coming to learn CSS selectors. CSS selectors and before we get into coding the selectors, let's take a look at what actually they are. CSS selectors. Okay, so we have the element selector. We can talk about the universal selector. Uh, we can still talk about the groupings selectors. And then we can talk about a class selector. And uh, we can also talk about the ID selector. And last but not least, we can talk about the descendant selector. And then the pseudo selector. Uh, these are just few. We can talk about attribute selectors. And when you want to go deep into the pseudo selectors, we can talk about the child selector, the siblings, and all these things. But for now, we want to focus on these seven areas, seven selectors in CSS. Okay, so not to waste much of the time, let's launch our text editor, of which I'm going to use Sublime Text. Sublime Text Editor. I'm going to use Sublime Text Editor, and I have it here. Okay, I already have some code here, of which I'm not going to use this code, so I quickly want to have a new file. And so let me check the syntax and make sure the syntax is HTML. All right, so let me get the structure very quick, HTML. And then that's it. And so let's quickly get the title, CSS selectors. All right, so we are good to go. So let's try to save this file. I want to quickly save this file onto my desktop. And so saving this file onto my desktop. Okay, I already have CSS selectors. CSS. Okay, let me save it as selectors. Okay, so I want to save it onto my desktop very quick. Quick one. So, then I save it. All right. Now, like I said before, we have the element selector, universal, and that. So, let's generate some text so I want to make good use of the I want to make good use of the P tag which actually stands for paragraph and in the paragraph I want to generate some text using the lorem keyword I click on tap and uh, it generates this I mean text for me and this P here is an example of an element selector and so let's say I want to give a background color to the text here or I want to give color to the font I mean color to the text itself so when we talk about selecting you just need to target the P which happens to be a tag selector or an element selector so that any other styling that you are giving to this text any other styling that you are giving to this paragraph will take effect by targeting the P so that is what we call the tag selector or the element selector and so we are coming to use the internal styling so the internal style we make good use of the style tag okay so make good use of the style tag make good use of the style tag and so like i said we want to play around the what the whole paragraph here want to play around the whole paragraph here so before we play around the paragraph so that we can actually know there are some effect has taking place let's quickly go back to our desktop let's quickly go back to our desktop 
go back to the desktop and then the file I saved was this one I save it as what CSS selectors so let me open it all right it's still empty it is empty because we've not saved this one so let's quickly save it and then go back and refresh all right I have saved that and I'm coming back here to refresh it once I refresh we should have those text displayed now the text has been displayed onto the what the web page onto the browser now let's get back and make good use of the selector so now I want to give a background to this so I just press on the what the I just press on I just target the P so I have targeted the P so that any other styling that I will do so let's say I want to give it a background so I want the color to be red and that is it if the color is red maybe I want the text color to also be let's say white and that's it and I want to say that um, I want to change all the text to what caps so we use the property called text transform so I'll say uppercase and that is it so now let's run and see save it control s get back to the browser refresh and then that is it it has taken effect it has given the background color to be red the text also white and then I have made all the text uppercase and this is the effect and so that is it for the element selector you can have a lot of elements you can have a lot of elements and so that is it for the element selector so let's see the next selector that we are going to talk about okay we are coming to talk about the universal selector all right so get back to the code the universal selector so from the word universal from the word universal from the word universal so i'm back to my code unless i want to make good use of the preserve tag in the same lorem keyword i generate some text here and then and that is it and so the universal selector make good use of what the universal selector make good use of the asterisk keyword asterisk keyword that is the universal selector and so i'm trying to locate it on my keyboard okay so we are coming to make good use of the asterisk keyword and so universal selector just use this one then you open your curly bracket and then the universal selector from the word universal so anything that you you do will affect the whole web page so let's take it for instance i want to give background color to the whole web page and then i want the background color to be black so universal selector affects just everything on the web page universal so if i refresh you realize that the whole web page is black now it is black and if i want to change the font color if i want to change the font color to let's say the color i want to take the color to say yellow I save it and I come here and refresh you see the color here now is yellow the color here is yellow the, that is the universal selector at a normal circumstance this one too should have been affected by it but there's a reason why this one has not been affected by the universal because the universal should should what be able to what override what they say universal so from the word universal it should be able to take effect or to affect any other doc any other styling or whatever on the page universal so let's refresh this one and then see
so if you never give this one a star if you never give this one a star save it and run that is where the inversion selector can take effect you see it has taken effect but because you gave it a star that is why it has not been able to what to affect it and the reason why it has not been able to affect it is because the element selector is very strong it is very strong that is why when you have when you style the content using the element selector the inversion selector wasn't able to override it because the element selector is very very strong all right so let's continue so we have seen the inversion selector and we have seen the elements and now let's check the next selector i think we have to talk about the groupings yeah so we talk about the grouping selectors so the grouping selectors the grouping selectors is just like um we have a lot of let's say you have a lot of p have a lot of paragraphs you have a lot of paragraphs on your web page you have a paragraphs on your web page a lot of paragraph on you have about three paragraphs on your web page now we have about three paragraphs on the web page three paragraphs all right so let's refresh and then see something on the web page all right so we have about three paragraphs on the web page now so this this one i'm talking about this one these three because this one here is making good use of what um the preserve tab that is why i'm not considering it and so let's say you want to give you want to give one star uh, let me see. I want to make this one H1 and let's say H1 and then let's say okay, we already have preserved there. That's true. So let me delete this one so that we can minimize it. So we already have the preserved tag there, and so we already have the preserved tag already have the preserve tag so this is what i want to all these we have three paragraphs here now and i want to give one star to all these three paragraphs to all the three paragraphs if we check we have header one here preserve and then a t tag here but i want to give them only one one star so what do i do do I have to be selecting them one after the other? So let's say I have to do P. Like this. And say background color. White. And come here. Come here and let's say H1. And say background color white <coughs> and come here and say pray and say pray and I'm like background color white so let's say here let's see and refresh so you see it has given me background color to be white all the three have been affected because that is what i did all the three have been affected because that is what i did and so the grouping the groupings selectors says that instead of doing them individually like this instead of doing them individually like this 
the one they found color to be black instead of doing them individual you can what actually group them and then give one style and then you are good to go so let's get back so that we can make good use of the grouping selector so the grouping selector instead of doing them individually just use a comma and you're like h1 and you're like three then you clear these two you clear these two if and then we first if and then we refresh it it will be same thing it has taken effect so in order for you to know it has taken effect let's change the background color to perhaps say red and then i say you go back to your code you go back to the browser you get back to the browser and refresh and you see it has taken effect that is the work of the grouping selector the work of the grouping selector and so let's go forward so you group them once and then make the code only one so we are going forward and so going forward let's check the next okay we are going to talk about the class selector so the class selector i'm here and so let me give this paragraph a class a class say about Okay, and then I want to start using the class. So the class selector, you use the dot, and then you write the name of the class. Dot that is full stop or a period. Full stop or a period. This is it. Full stop or a period. Then you write the name of the class, and you are like this. And so that paragraph here. This paragraph here. This paragraph here, I want to make good use of this paragraph. I want to play around this paragraph. I want to play around this paragraph. And so, let's say I want to, I want to, let's say I want to give it a, a background color of um, perhaps green. And I save, and maybe I will have to add something, and then maybe the normal color should also be green. Then I save, and I come here, refresh it, and it has taken effect. That way, the combination is not good, and so I can give this one to be white. So and I save and I come here and refresh this time I think this is okay so you see so you just is using the class selector so you give the class and then whatever you do will affect that one okay let's go ahead to make good use of an ID selector so just write ID let's say which ID do you want uh, yeah like truffle as an ID and then drop as an id and then you want to also play around the h1 you want to play around the h1 here and so before you you go this is the h1 you are going to play around the h1 the whole of this paragraph this is the h1 here and so you get back to your code you get back to your code we are going to use the the ID, so the ID we use this one. Uh, uh, what is this? Okay, the ID we are using this. So the, uh, the name of the ID is what truffle. The name of the ID is truffle, and this time around the background happens to be what red. So this time around we give the background to be what white. We give the background as white. And then the color as yellow and then I want to transform the text I want to transform the text to what cap so that is uppercase to say 
then come here and I refresh and then it has just done as we do here so that the combination is not damn good and so you can change this perhaps to black the other way around the combination is not damn good and then okay so now this is how you have it that is also using the id selector okay going forward uh, we are going to talk about now we are coming to talk about the descendant selector so the descendant selector we come here descendant selector um, we have to make good use of um, have to make good use of um, the, the div and inside a div I want to have an li so I want to have an li inside the div and then I want to copy this one and paste it like this save this and then refresh this on the page before we go ahead I tell us they couldn't save or something I didn't save it or something because we didn't save okay I think it saved but just that because of the background color which is which is black that is why you are not seeing it so I want to leave it so that we play around it so that we can get it. So we want to play around it using the descendant word selector. First of all, it has been nested. It has been nested in the div tab. And so now we want to give it a background color of white so that we can see it on the web page. It has taken effect just that uh, on the web page the background color is black and that is why so the descendants are like we are saying that the div is containing the list so before you'll be able to cite the list you should must target the div and then you are like li before you open your curly bracket before you open your curly bracket now we are good to go before you open your curly bracket and so now let's see a background color we are giving it white. So let's see. Can I refresh? If all that is uniform, you should have it displayed. Okay. So it has what? Now that the background color is what? White. You see that it has shown here. So that is what? The descendant selector. So the div and the li. So check it here check it here so the div here the div here ending here is nesting what here everything here so before you can have a proper selection on the li you need to specify that you want the li that is in the div you can have some li's that might not be in the div so you specify the div before the li that is what we call the descendant selector okay so we want to go into the pseudo selector the pseudo selector so pseudo selector i want to have uh, let's say um okay so i already have some paragraphs here so i want to use the the p tag here and then explain the pseudo selector so the pseudo selector mostly we use it for links as at when as at when a link is has been visited as at when a link is active as at when maybe when you have to hover over a link all these things we talk about a I mean a pseudo selector so i want to make this p paragraph here or any of the p paragraph to hover 
I need to take their mouse over it if it hovers so this is how, how we do it. I need to take the mouse over it if it hover. And so I open my curly bracket. So I open my curly bracket, close it here. And I'm like what should be the background when you hover over it? It should be let's say black. Uh -huh. So let me show it. I'll come here. I will stress. Where is the paragraph? So it's not taking effect. Yeah, I think this is the paragraph. So it has taken effect. This is the only P paragraph we have. So, so let's get back to the code so that I got it well. So this is the P. And this is the P paragraph here. So we are saying that when you take the mouse over it, the color should change. So let me change this color to say yellow. And save. So once I take over it, it's supposed to change. It's changing what? Black. But I've changed it to yellow, so I have to refresh it. Now, when I take over it, it has changed what? Yellow. That is also the pseudo selector. And so maybe you can change the text and say color. Once you take the mouse over it, the color of the text too can also change to let's say pink. And so I save it and I can refresh. So when I take the mouse over it, the background color will change to yellow and the text will change to what? Pink. And so you can see that. And so you can see that display. You can see that display, you see, and that is how we also use the pseudo selector. So you need to always keep in touch with this channel, and so that any time we bring about a new video, you will get a notification. There is more to learn. There is more to learn. So don't forget to smash the bell icon, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, so that any time we come up with a video you will quickly get a notification so see you in the next video